totally well, illegal. You just, you just lived up to the stereotype. I did. It turned me into a monster. <laughs> that person definitely thinks like, oh, that BMW, that douche. That's all it takes. I think they, they must pipe something into the car. <laughs> it just like to make you. It turns you into a tool. They pipe in up oxygen. <laughs> Mahara looks okay. Hey everybody, we're back with another one. A BMW M3. What year is this? This is a 2018. Oh yes. 2018 BMW M3. Excellent. This is no ordinary M3. This is a fancy boy M3. Because the price of this base is 66,000, right? So, okay, base price of the BMW M3 is 66. 500. Yeah. That's with a manual transmission. If you get an automatic, that ups it to 69,400. And this, as tested, is $84,100. Wow. That is so expensive. That is expensive for a sports sedan. Yeah. But this is a fun sports sedan. So they opted for all the options, right? The, yes. So this has pretty much all the options, including the competition package. Does that include turn signals? Uh, <laughs> Got them. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, man. Take Whoa. that, BMW drivers. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Love me when Three, two, one. There it goes. Ooh. Man, that hit quick. Yeah, that picked up there. <laughs> and when it started, it was like, eh. Yeah. But then pretty soon after, that, that goes. Quick. Yeah, that really throws you back. Man. That feels good. Yeah, that throws you back really well. And it's smooth and comfortable, too. Exactly, it's well behaved. <laughs> Compared to other things we've done, I think that feels most similar to the Tesla because of just how smooth it is. It's yeah, not as fast, It doesn't obviously. have that, that immediate torque that electric cars have, especially that yeah. P100D, good God. Yeah. But this, uh, yeah, this feels more refined than something like the Corvette. Yes, the Corvette was just like ruthless. No, it was brutal. This is like, uh, it's loud and angry, yeah. but it's also comfy and smooth. I like it, that's a nice middle ground, I think. Yeah. Between the raw power and the precision. So, okay, the base, all I know that it really does is like the base horsepower of this, uh, if you get the base model, is 425 horsepower with 406 pound feet of torque. That's pretty solid already. Those are solid numbers. Uh, if you get the competition package, that ups it to 444 horsepower. Spicy. Which this one has. Nice. So, this has a pretty good amount, but I just floored it there and. Eh. Yeah. It's. Um it has a really high red line, seven and a half thousand. Seven, yeah, seven and a half thousand is the red line on the RPM, and it, this is called coming out of a twin turbo three liter inline six engine. I've always, I've always had trouble discerning BMW telling it really? apart. Yeah, man, I feel like uh, it's pretty easy just because of the grill. I don't know if you're yeah. looking from the side profile or the back profile. Yeah, it does look kind of generic, but the front of BMWs always are very iconic with their grill. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And this has that. Yeah, I do like the looks of this car. I really like the. Um, there's like a bulge in the hood. Yeah, it, makes it, looks, it looks really aggressive. It looks mean. It looks like a muscle car. Yeah, it looks. It's, it shares that look kind of with the Charger. Yeah, which. It's, yeah. I think it adds a lot, honestly. However, I think the real special part of this car is the interior, yeah. which is killer, I oh, think. I freaking love it. This is so nice. It's comfortable. It's It's got, I don't know what this is, some kind of polymer, some kind of, I don't <laughs> want to say plastic, It's because that sounds cheap. But it, it feels a little more upscale than plastic. Yeah, it's fancy plastic. It's it, expensive plastic. Yeah, all <laughs> expensive plastic. <laughs> all in all, it feels quite upscale and nice in here. Uh, it's luxurious and you would expect that yeah when you're paying like somewhere 84, between 66,000 to 84,000 or even above uh, prices do go up from there yeah um, this can approach uh, the six-figure mark for a BMW sedan that's pretty high which is quite high yeah I love these bucket seats these are my favorite bucket seats we have ever sat in I think just based on how they look and how they feel however there's one critical flaw yeah as we experienced earlier oh yeah there are holes there are harassment holes. There are harassment holes. The passive, the people in the back can reach through and tickle the driver. And I genuinely mean a fatal flaw. Yeah. Because that'll kill you on the highway. If somebody, <laughs> JT was tickling me <laughs> earlier through the holes, you can just stick your hands and poke whoever's driving and cause them to kill you. Yeah. When you, the, you're driving. If you forget about that, you're screwed. You're <laughs> <laughs> Observe. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Um, most everything is soft touch here, but it's like a firm soft touch, so you know it's luxurious. Yes, I, I do. I really love how the steering wheel feels. This is the most comfortable steering wheel in any car I've ever felt. Wow. That sounds weird because it's not something I've ever really mentioned or talked about in a video before, but... I guess you don't notice it. I don't notice it, it but yeah. this wheel is comfortable. Like, it's good to grip and hold on to. Have you got this thing in manual? Uh, I don't know. There you go. Now try the paddle shifters. Are they quick? They're very quick, Oh, wow. Actually. Yeah, I can feel that. There's, like, zero delay. It's pretty... Yeah. Okay, so it shifts shifts are good. I guess probably I would expect that if I was yeah, I mean, if you're, BMW. Yeah, I mean, if you're opting for a performance car with paddle shifters... With a competition package and yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, that should be really quick. And it is. This is precise. Good. And I like that. That's a good plus. Yeah. No knocks there. All right. There uh, are a couple things I noticed looking around the cabin. Um, this little cubby thing, it's really weird. Like, you have to really <laughs> wedge your hand back there to open it. And I it. guess that's where your cigarette lighter is at. Yeah. And uh, it's hard to close because it's just kind of shoved way back there. I don't know what you could put in there, really. I mean, some coins, maybe. Yeah. And then this thing, that's pretty fun. This that thing is, is weird. Um, the center console, Ooh. it does, it just <laughs> falls over. Like, most of the time, it, it'll it bounce down. But if you put it all the way up, it latches in place. So it's not going to fall ever. Okay. So, wonky. If your infotainment is rather interesting, I do feel like this is a little dated actually surprisingly yeah some of these buttons um, even look a little bit off center like this is higher than that one yeah like it just i don't know it's hard to explain why i feel this way but it just feels a little old school there's it's not a bad thing but no it's just a little different. it's just a little dated um i like 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 for example audis are probably the closest rival to these yeah and audis have what's called the virtual cockpit system on the dash yeah which is where everything is digital and it gives you like a good heads-up display and you have um, like all the data you need is there, like a map and everything else. This is all very analog still, mm -hmm. which is potentially a cool thing if you yeah, prefer. Yeah, it's just personal preference, yeah. really. If you prefer analog styles over digital styles, this is probably what you would want to get over an Audi, because Audi's gone full digital and this is still fairly analog for the most part. Yeah. All your gauges here are all. Um, you do have some little displays underneath. You have underneath. some displays underneath. You have a small digital display. It shows you all your settings, like your sport yeah. mode and stuff, which I'm trying to figure out how to get to, but there's a giant GoPro in my way. <laughs> Speaking of some modes like efficient mode and such this reminds me of mpg which i don't know if anybody getting this is ever going to really care yeah necessarily about mpg but it does get 17 mpg uh in the city and 25 on the highway which is not super great nah, of course decent. you shouldn't expect super great mpg with a performance <laughs> sports sedan but there you go there you are there you've got your stats <laughs> if you want them you've got that i put it back in sport suspension and steering I think that's where you're going to want to live most of the time Yeah. Uh, in this car because it strikes a good balance between really crazy, let's go fast, and not being too unpleasant to live with. Mm -hmm. It's still very comfortable. It's not overly stiff. And turning radius is... Oh, can she do it? Yes. Yes. Not bad. Pretty good turning radius, actually. Definitely a lot better than the Alfa Romeo Giulia that, oh, we, for sure. that we tested which is probably the closest competitor that we've reviewed, I think, so far, just like in terms of sports sedans. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I can already say I would definitely take this over an Alfa Romeo Giulia. Yeah, for, for me, there's for no sure. contest. This is just so much better in yeah. every way. The steering is really... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the steering is really stiff. Yeah when you put it in Sport Plus. Oh, well, yeah, I was gonna say that figures. If you could put the performance from one of these, from the M Series, in an i8, perfect car. Perfect car, yeah. But the i8's like a weird hybrid yeah. thing. Alas, yeah. probably Alas. not possible. Yeah, however, yeah, I don't know. The performance on this is great. Uh, that speed was really raw, really good, really throws you back in your seat. But you never feel like you're gonna die. Yeah, but it feels refined. Yeah. That all things being said. I will say, the Sport Plus steering is almost too much. It's like almost overbearing. You really gotta, it wants to pull back to, to center line yeah. always. Yeah, I was gonna ask you what you thought about the handling, because I know like, Lots of people say that the BMW M Series cars have some of the best handling. I would totally agree from, <coughs> from just what we've done here. Bless you, by the Thank way. Thank you. But I'm going to go into comfort and see what that's like. Okay. How much more chill does it get? Not much. 
Really? It's still really stiff. Now, maybe if I messed with some of my other settings here, like my suspension, let's go comfort and efficient drive mode. It's a little bit more wiggly, but not by much. And I, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. I don't think you want it to be You don't super want it wiggly. to be super loose. Yeah. And I think it's reasonable. It doesn't feel, you don't feel the difference nearly as much as in something like a Tesla. Yeah. Whereas when you when you press the button on the Tesla, Changes happen like you can feel right it lower, away. you can feel yeah. it tense up. This one is much more subtle. How would you, how do you feel about this compared to the Evora? Uh, I definitely think the Evora is more fun. I agree. For multiple reasons. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, the Evora is like, the manual is just so much fun. I don't know what the manual in this would be like. But the shifting in that is so good and so fun, and uh, it being mid-engined, yeah. it looks crazy and it gets like way more attention and way more looks. It's and, a proper sports car experience. And it's way louder than this, yeah. even though it has a V6 and it actually has less horsepower than this. Yeah. It still sounds way louder. Yeah, because that's what it was designed to do. It was designed to be flashy and loud and fast and right. fun. Whereas this one was designed to be fast and loud and, and stuff, also comfortable. But, but also comfortable. Yeah, yeah, the Lotus is not comfortable. Nope. Not really. You this... have plenty of space in the back here. Yeah. You have zero space in the back in the Lotus. Yeah. So this is all around far more practical. It has a trunk. You know, which I can fit in. Which you can actually fit in. I mean, the Lotus kind of has a trunk that you could fit like a, maybe a small duffel bag in. Maybe. Yeah. And that's about it. I mean, as far as rivals go, this isn't competing with the Lotus. It's just like the no. price point is similar. But uh, this is really competing with the likes of Audi, Lexus. Mercedes. Those are probably the big two. Mercedes, Audi, Lexus, Mercedes, and Maybe. arguably Alfa Romeo. Yeah, you, could, the you could even say Jaguar a little bit. And maybe a little bit of Jag. Yeah. This set, like There is a lot of competition in the sports sedan market right now. Yeah. And here's the thing. Lexus cars and Mercedes cars, I believe, make cars, sports sedans, about as well like about as similarly priced as this to go faster. So if you're going for yeah. speed, this is not, I don't know, necessarily what you want to go with. Cause I know Lexus and Audi make sedans that are about as priced as this to go faster, just slightly. At yeah. like 3.9 seconds or 3.7 seconds or so, which so, isn't much. Yeah, at that point, it's but like you've got to pick the one you prefer. Cause I do feel like, yeah, a lot of it is personal preference here at this point. They're all very, very good cars. They're yeah. all very comfortable. They're refined. They're quiet. And they're fast. So, yeah. The, the, I mean, it's a competitive market for good reasons because a lot of automakers they're, are really good at it. And they're pop. it's a popular market, too. Yeah, oh, super popular. And I would say my personal preference is BMW. Yeah. I don't know, I'd have to drive more of them. Um, I love this car. I think it's a blast. I wanna see what Audi comes out with, because they're coming out with their e-tron GT, yes. which looks fantastic. Yeah. And they're, they've also talked about doing a sport, an electric sports car that's yeah. not the e-tron GT. Right. So we'll see what they can do. I think they could make a, a big splash as like the electric sports car maker. Yes. But we'll see. This, this is the type of car that I would look forward to getting into at the end of the day, like if I were working in an office or something. And that right there, what you just said, is I think why this car is so popular. Yep. Because you can get in this, you can look forward to driving it home and like getting in this and just having a comfortable, chill ride, but also you can be fast and aggressive at the flip of a switch whenever yep. you want. You can just stomp people if they get in your way in traffic. Yeah. Which is the ideal road rage That's car. why these are so popular, because like if you're working out in the office and you just want to like have a chill day, coming back, you want to enjoy your ride, you look forward to just getting in this and just driving home. Yeah. And it's perfect for that. Oh, and it can be amazing. a driving monster when you want. I guess that really is the ultimate driving machine. <laughs> <laughs> BMW uh, logo pops BMW. up on screen. Bling! <laughs> It is rating time. All right. Let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, starting us out is performance, which is high. It is. I think it's quite good. Zero to 60 time, four seconds. Uh, that's fast. It's a speedy car. And handling is sharp. really good. It's very good, very sharp. I'm going to go with a seven and a half. I think it's, I think it's that good. Wow. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit lower than that. Well, it's really good. That's the thing, it's really, really good. So I need to give it what it deserves for performance and then I'll knock it for some other stuff. I'm gonna also give it a seven and a half. Seven and a half, yeah. okay. So what we got for that, next up, practicality, which is 
reasonably well. I mean, reasonable. you have actually usable back seats that are actually pretty spacious and comfortable for us being average sized adults. Yeah. It's good for us. Spacious um, back seats, spacious plenty back seats. of space in the you trunk. You have a trunk that does have a emergency release also, so you can get out and if you get if kidnapped. you get kidnapped in a BMW. That's practical. Yep. <laughs> That being said though, it does get knocked for using premium gas and for getting 17 MPG city and 25 highway. That's not that great. Yeah. Um, I know there's more practical things in the world than this. Overall, Six. I'm gonna give it a five and a half. Next up is value, which is tough. a hard one because, okay, again, as an $84,000 car, I think the value is kind of eh. Yeah. As $66,000, I think the value is good, especially yeah. just considering the quality of the components and how fun the ride is. I think it's a decent value, but I do know BMWs do depreciate. Yeah. So if you could snag rapidly. one of these used, that'd probably be a really good value. I think I'm going to, I don't know. Uh, value is the, always the toughest thing for me to quantify. Yeah. I feel like, but I, I suspect that the lower cost one, the 66,000 base model with the manual transmission might be a better value for me than something like this. I agree with that. I think I would give that a better value than this. However, we were driving it as it is, as tested at 84,000. And for that, I have to give this probably no more than a five. I was thinking that too. I can't imagine stomach like spending almost six figures on on this basically. Yeah. I think I'm gonna agree with that actually. Let's yeah, a five. A five. Cool factor, meh. Eh. I mean, I think BMWs are cool. I think this is a cool car. No one's gonna really notice the M badge though as being cool, except for car geeks. Yeah. They're the only ones that are gonna notice. The general public isn't gonna look at that and be like, oh wow, an M badge, and think like this is a, something, yeah. a really special BMW or anything. I so, might say five and a half for the cool factor, because uh, it's cooler than a lot of average cars. And I think I'm gonna go with a five, a little lower than that. Like, eh, like it's cool, but it's not uncool. Yeah, and it's but not a boring car It's by not any cool. Means. So I think a five is fair, it's yeah. right there in the middle. Um, next up is quality, which I think is actually pretty high. The only thing I'm a little worried about is the long-term kind of reliability issues here yeah. that you're inevitably going to get. I really like the interior of this car, except for some weird things like this is weird, the little coin holder thing. Yeah. And the, the center console could be a little bit nicer. I'm gonna give it a seven. That's, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was actually thinking that exact same point. And then the following and final is fun factor, which I think is quite respectable. It is respectable. And quite high in this. This is gonna be contentious. This is gonna be contentious, I do think, because it can be chill and you can cruise in it. And we've definitely driven more fun cars than this, yeah. I, I believe. But this is still pretty fun. Like you can still, the engine sounds so good. It does sound so and good. And it's so fast and it throws you back and the seats are so cool. Um, I'm gonna give this for oh. fun factor, just for how fun it is to drive around. A six. I'm gonna go with a six and a half. Okay, cool. It wasn't as contentious as I thought. Not as contentious. I think it's a little better than a six, but I think, I think it's fun. Like this is a fun car. It's fast and all that. However, like it's not quite the same as the Corvette. And so, I don't know, we should have thrown that in along with the Lotus. The Corvette yeah. is like, very similarly very similar priced. Price. Like a Corvette Z06 is about the same price as this. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely take the Corvette. I would too. Yeah. Personal preference, I'm a 25 year old dude. Yeah. I'd rather have the Corvette Z06. I don't have a family. I don't really care about practicality. None of that really matters to me. Yeah. The Corvette's definitely more fun. Oh, absolutely. It's just more <laughs> raw. 36.75. Respectable. The average score is 36.75 of the 2018 BMW M3, which is quite respectable. That is uh, about two points higher than we rated the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Yeah. Not the Quadrifoglio Giulia, mind you, just the base Giulia. Maybe if we had the Quadrifoglio, we'd rate it a little higher. Probably. But still, higher than the Giulia, which I think this deserves. It's also more expensive than the Giulia, like significantly more. Yeah. Um, like $20,000 more. Jeez. <laughs> so it should be. Yeah, it better be better. It better be better, and it is. And uh, interestingly, we rated this just a little lower than the Tesla Model 3. Wow. The Tesla Model 3, we did 37.25, half a point higher than this, and the Model 3 is actually cheaper than this. Yeah. Well, I think that's a fair score for this. It's pretty high. Yep. Considering its shortcomings and the fact that it's not super cool compared to some other exotic cars. Yep. 
So, thank you guys for tuning in for this episode of the Bavarian Motor Works M3. We hope hey, you enjoyed it. Wow. Don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but... Listen to this guy, he's speaking all sorts hey, of different languages. Anyway, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. It'll be good. See you guys later. Peace. There's one thing I know, it's cars. You know who else knows a lot about cars? Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with Curiosity Stream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for Curiosity Stream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.